Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Xana520, and welcome back to Metroid Prime Trilogy. And welcome to Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. Metroid Prime 3 Corruption was actually made for the Wii, so the motion controls are much more ingrained into the game, whereas with 1 and 2, they were kind of an afterthought using the Metroid Prime 3 engine. Metroid Prime 3 picks up shortly after the events of Metroid Prime 2 and continues the story of the whole phase on thing whereas we had hunters that went off in a completely different direction entirely the first episode of this is going to be extremely lore heavy and very quick the game also has voice acting and cutscenes which give it a bit of a hard left turn. Ship log. Autopilot navigation initiated. Destination coordinates? Planet Norian. Kalandor region. Life support status. Cryogenic system stable. Heart rate 15 BPM. Blood pressure. Life support anomaly detected. Neurological readings indicate. Destination coordinates. Following the events of Metroid Prime 2, the Space Pirates returned to Aether to gather as much of the Phazon that they could from the environment and the atmosphere. However, in the process, they managed to pick up something more than they bargained for. So here we are, finding ourselves within Samus's ship. Samus's ship gets a big overhaul and a major part of the game dedicated to it. So, what we need to do now is activate our little communicator up here at the top and enter in our ID code. You can see that motion controls are, again, much more integrated into the game. So, we've got all kinds of little buttons stuff going on here. We got this little guy, which tells us our stats. We have this little thing here that puts us in combat mode. We never need to use that. We've got this one that activates a bioscan. Status clear. Very nice. Shows a various suit online. And we have this one, which activates a sort of like solar shield. We've got this down here that will enable us to do other things later, but right now, I believe this is the only time we ever need to use the thruster controls. Which introduce us to the motion controls of the game. Not only are we going to be doing point and click, we are also going to be moving our hands around and doing all kinds of interesting things. 
Samus also appears to have gotten a brand new ship between Metroid Prime 2 and Metroid Prime 3. But right now, we are landing ourselves upon the GFS Olympus. Land our space boat here. Big reveal. We go. So, controls for Metroid Prime 3 are very similar to Metroid Prime 1. B to jump, A to shoot, pointer to move around, or look around, move around with the control stick, Z locks on, C enters morph ball mode, minus opens the visors. We have this, which is our scan visor. We can give our ship a scan. I'll explain the screen later on. There's a lot to scan in this game. Plus, it doesn't do anything at the moment. Usually, it would bring up the beam selector, but we don't have that. One opens the map. We've got our logbook here on the left. Our inventory options, because you get all this weird stuff. And then you've got like context-sensitive icons over here, like this one, which centers on Samus. We've got our objectives. This is a very story-driven game. We've got our creatures log, we've got our research log, lots of research, and we've got our lore. On our inventory screen, we've got our suit inventory and our ship inventory. And that'll become important later. We also have our credits inventory. Now you can see I had a bit of a failed recording earlier. Red credits can be used to purchase bonus items in the extras menu. You acquire red credits by scanning creatures and bosses. Gold credits are gotten by defeating bosses on different difficulty modes. Blue credits by locating and scanning lore and special goals. And then there's these weirdos. The friend credits. This is why the game is almost impossible to complete 100% anymore. And I do not mean Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. I mean Metroid Prime Trilogy. You get friend credits by earning these things. Friend vouchers. There are special little mini quests that occur during the game, which is things like getting a high score on the... There's a mini game over here where you like have to juggle a little drone thing. Um, and like killing a certain number of enemies. Those will give you friend vouchers. The friend vouchers then need to be sent over We Connect 24 to a friend, which will then let them get the friend credit. Which means you had to have somebody send you friend vouchers to get friend credits. I have a save file that has all the friend vouchers or friend credits I need. So that's why I'm able to do that. And then we've got our options, which is like control options, display options, sound options, and then, you know, quit. Two doesn't do anything either. So, moving forward. Your by shooting these targets. We are told to shoot the targets. Break the targets. Calibration complete. Samus, welcome to the flagship Olympus. Admiral Dane is waiting for you in the briefing room. I will upload the location to you now. Now, unlike Metroid Prime 1 and 2, there is no way that I know of to disable the help system. Because the game is very story driven. Also, this is the thing I was talking about earlier where you can juggle this guy for a friend voucher. It gets harder to go do as it goes on. I think it's like 50. But let's give this individual a scan because this is our first creature, fleet mechanic. Also, I suppose that this guy could have been our first creature. Federation Marine. We're going to be seeing these guys a lot. We also have 
Federation crate. And heavy Federation crate. This is locked. As is that. Okay, so let me explain the little icons down in the lower right corner and left corner, I suppose. Items that are not for your logbook will have this solar system icon. Creatures will have the Metroid icon. Technology, or research, will have the microscope icon. And then lore... Is this a creature? This is a creature. What the heck? Training drone. Every time you scan a creature that I have not, I have not scanned already, will give me a red credit. This is research. This door. Okay, so explanation for the doors, because which I didn't, gl I glossed over in my original recording, and I hated the original recording, which is why I have to do it over. Sometimes doors will take forever and a day to load or open. That is because they are loading zones. The loading zone, depending on how long it takes for the room beyond it to load, will be how long it takes for the door to open. Kind of annoying. So we got a male fleet trooper and a female fleet trooper here. Looks like he's getting ready for close We've got uh, this broken axis ramp, which we need to shoot these guys for. Bit of a training exercise. Uh, there's one other thing in this room that I need to scan, and that is this guy. The Halberd class turret. It's a security turret. You'll notice that there are people standing here, and if I get close to them, my reticule turns to this little triangle. If I shoot at them, that turret will come down and start blowing the crap out of me, so let's not do that. Is there any more lore or anything in here? Does this not break? Oh, there we go. Uh, what? Uh, the... Uh, the charge beam has a bit more of a thing going on where if you do not charge it all the way it actually does less damage. So... So what we need to do is we need to come through this gate. We need to scan this door for a blast shield to scan for our research. Security lock control pad. Access code input required to unlock nearby door. But before we can do that we need to come over to this terminal Give it a scan. And figure out our access code. Which is... 13576. It is not randomized. 13576. And we have a friendly chap here. This is a hunter named Gore. Like in Metroid Prime Hunters, there are other bounty hunters in this game. Gore is one of them. However, they are our allies this time, rather than our rivals. We've got nothing going on over there. Over there, that little red thing, that's one of our lore entries. Each different kind of lore has a different scan icon. Is this another technology? I never scanned this. No, it is not. So, we've got motion control door opening. Pull away. Twist. Push. We're going to be doing that a lot in this game. Go through a little scan here. We've done this before. This one does it automatically, so we don't have to, like, rotate a little thing. We're still clear. Alrighty, let's get out of this room. 
and get our first lore entry. This is what Galactic Federation lore looks like, these terminals. You got data file 88001. And whenever you're done scanning them, they go into that form. Looks like the floor is getting repaired here. Hello? Well, let's just put our hand on this thing. Activate the elevator. And head up. Things are going to start happening very quickly, very soon. You'll hear that voice over the intercom. That voice will become important later. So what we've got here is the bridge. We've got uh, some terminals here. We've got tactical. We've got defense systems. And we've got astrogation. And these are obviously going to be like defense turrets or whatever. Now, if we come up here... We try to talk to this guy, he'll tell us that we need to save first. So, we're going to come over here and do that. Save station is behind this door. These are our energy. Small energy here, which does 10. Excuse me, that. Large energy does 50, and I believe there's also a medium energy that does 30. But, coming in here, we have our save station. Let's give her a save, because... But thou must. Nice little save animation. Very nice. And now we head back and talk to... The Great Deku Tree over here. Come down the long hallway, and we'll get to meet Admiral Dane, Gore, and the other two hunters we share this game with. Dendrita, enough! Looks like everyone's here now. Before I begin the briefing, let me introduce 242, the flagship's Aurora unit. Ah, an organic supercomputer. Fascinating. It's my understanding that the Galactic Federation's core network is comprised of such units. That is correct, Lord. And we serve as the network's master control. However, currently the network is down. That seems inefficient, but necessary. You see, seven days ago, we discovered that all Aurora units were infected with an unknown virus. We were forced to bring the network down. Fortunately, our scientists were quickly able to devise a vaccine. Unit 242 was the first AU to receive the vaccine. We were able to completely purge the virus. Where did this virus come from? We believe the virus is of space pirate origin. Four months ago, the GFS Valhalla went missing while on a training mission in the Klar Nebula. The ship's logs revealed that they were attacked by a space pirate raiding vessel. What is the logic in disrupting a Federation training mission? They're pirates. How could they resist a prize like that? That never would have happened if I'd been there. Then it's a shame you weren't. The pirates boarded the Valhalla and gained access to the ship's Aurora unit, 313. This is how they were able to hack into the network and plant the virus. Thanks to our security protocols, we were able to shut down the network before the damage to the virus became irreversible. But we're still vulnerable. If the pirates decide to launch a major offensive, we'd be hard-pressed to defend ourselves. We must rid the other AUs of that virus and bring the network back online. That's where you come in. 
We need you to deliver the vaccine to each of the AUs in this system. We'd also like you to investigate the pirates' activity in the area. We need to know what they're up to. Condition red. All personnel to combat ready stations. Repeat. Condition red. Sir, a space pirate attack fleet has just warped out of some sort of wormhole. They're also heading for Sector Zero, the planet's home base. No, they're targeting the planetary defense system. Get down to the planet and aid the ground troops. Stop those pirates from disabling the defense system. Go! So, in short, the Galactic Federation has hired us to try and purge this virus from the systems. Uh, remember what I said about doors? But before we could... Zamas, get to your ship. We need you down on the planet. Until we get the fleet in formation... Jeez! Okay. Well, I'm down here now. We need to get to our ship post haste. So they've hired us to help with the uh, the uh, whole virus situation. But before we could do anything to help get that situation resolved, the pirates have now attacked Norian and the, fl uh, the fleet above it. So, we now have to get to our ship and deal with the problem here. So here's our first pirates. These are pirate militia. They are grunt troops. They're very weak. Two charge shots will take them out. This is where you would actually earn probably your first uh, blue credit. By saving these two GF troopers you would earn a blue credit. Space Pirate Boarding Pod. This light crafter used to pierce the bulkheads of larger ships. We also need to save this guy from these crawl tanks. In fact, I need to scan them first. Hello, crawl tank. These guys are going to get annoying later. You get another blue credit here if you save that guy. Get some health back. Come through here, and as you come across in the corner, there's going to be... that ship crashes into the ship. You need to act fast, shoot that, and save this guy. If you save this guy, you get a friend voucher. You alright? Get your, get your bearings, man. Jeez. Coming back here, another boarding vessel will crash into the uh, Olympus. And the pirates will steal some kind of glowy object. There's three of them. Two of them are armored, and this one is not. These guys are actually different enemies. These are armored pirate militia. They're expendable, but they are slightly more defensive. Now, your idea here is to actually, well, kill that guy with the, the thing. But if you do so, they'll just all play, like, uh, catch with the thing. They're basically playing football here, and you are the defense. So what we need to do is take this guy out. Two charge shots will take off his armor, and then a third one will des destroy him. And now we need to pick this little guy up. This is a portable GF energy cell. We are going to be encountering a lot of these over the course of the game. Picking it up, we'll bring the power generator back down. And we can now plug the battery back into its socket. Let's do this. Push. Turn. 
Turn the power back on. Turn all the little gizmos in the room back on. Close the doors. And now we've got these things. These are crawl mines. They're mini crawl tanks. They're equally as annoying. So what we need to do is buy time. Get rid of this crawl tank. Because somewhere down here, under the platform, you can see there's a uh, morph ball hole there. Excuse me. Eventually, there will be a crawl tank. There he is. Coming through the floor. There's that 30 energy I was talking about, this little red one. He will come through, pop that grate off, and allow us to get out of here. So let's just roll through this hole and get out of here. You can see this individual up here, who appears to have ice base powers. But, already, first energy tank. Useful. We've got the the flick ball jump. Charge me up. Open the door. Fire. And now I'm in here. What the heck is this? Discarded debris appears to be made up from broken machinery and damaged ship parts. What's this? Security override enabled. Lock has been deactivated. Disposal system on standby. We appear to be in some kind of Star Wars-esque disposal unit. However, the only way out is through this hole. Got our the research bomb slot. Activating this bomb slot will cycle the airlock. And out we go. Uh, Samus? <laughs> well, thankfully there's a handy dandy porthole here that appears to lead to an elevator somehow. Point being, we're back on the ship. Let's get out of here. So we've got these two guys over here. That guy dies. Uh, Gandreda. Just kick that person. Or that pirate. And the only way... and uh, If you didn't catch it, our ship is on the other side of this thing. On the other side of these doors. We've got pirates here. This is in the way. This, we need an explosive blast. Which means we need to go find missiles now. Destroy the crawl tank. Destroy the crawl tank. Destroy the crawl tank. And then deal with this pirate up here. I believe we can scan this ship. Get out of here. I believe we can scan this ship. Does this ship have a scan? No, it doesn't. Stiletto fire has sustained heavy damage. Let's get in here, because here is our missile launcher. Missile launcher online. Press down to fire. Yep. Missiles, once again, are homing. So we should be able to do one of these. Take him out. He dropped some missiles, so we can use our charge beam to pull in his uh, drop. Another crawl tank. Let's get this open. Gotta shoot the targets. Break the targets. Bring the bridge. And hopefully save this poor GF trooper. These things are arrow mines. 
They drop their shield to fire at you, but if you're quick enough, you can hit them and knock them out of formation. This is the only way to get rid of them. That shield is impenetrable. How about you go away? Oh, I missed. Stop dodging the bullet. Thank you. Alright, you're okay. However, we are reaching the end of our adventure here. So, next time on Metroid Prime 3 Corruption, we will get back to our ship and head down to the planet Norian to try and activate the planetary defense system. This is Santa 520, signing out. <laughs>